I'm here before you because it is the time of year where the city begins to plan for rolling its bond anticipation notes in May, as well as to produce the funding needed for the adopted capital budget. Um, in the legislative request before you, it shows that um, we are looking for approximately $4.5 million in general fund and sewer fund capital projects. And this year, unlike last year, we do have um, a bond anticipation note that was issued in 2009 that must be permanently financed. So we're going to be going into the bond market for that. That's $25.5 million. That's the 2009 band since the original issue year. And then we are recommending from a standpoint of efficiency and, and uh, the read of our financial advisor uh, of the market to also include permanently financing our 2010 bands. Uh, because they will have to be permanently financed next year. Their par amount is um, somewhat less, so there's a, a there's efficiency to combining those two together right now. And the 2014 adopted budget, the debt service um, budget, would support that. Um, so that is what, what is before you right now. We're recommending that we um, issue a band to fund the 2014 capital projects and then roll the existing bands except for the 2009 and 10s, which we will be permanently bonded. <clears throat> Excuse me. Questions? Mr. Reedy. Do you have a, an estimate of what the annual payment's going to be for this? The annual payment for which piece of it? For the, the bonds? Well, for the bonds. Yes, I Because the total is about $70 million. Isn't it close to the bands and the bonds? Well, I have an estimate for permanently financing the 2009 and 2010, and over the life, that would be a uh, principal of slightly over $37 million and annual interest that would total approximately $22.2 million. And what's the reason again for going uh, with... Well, 2010. Next, next year we're going to have to right. do, do do the 2010 for sure. Right. So in, in the 2010 par is around 11.6. So just from an economy of scale, knowing where the market is right now, throwing it in and doing the bonds, one issuance of bonds this year that's a little greater will it, it is it is a good move because the next year we just have to do the bands or depending upon how the market is if we decide to, to do any bonding. But we have the ability to do that because of the 2014 adopted budget um, has sufficient debt service and the way the market is right now, it looks like we could probably get around, around 4%, which is a really pretty good rate. Do you think it'll be more next year, so they think? Well, it's, it's really hard to say, Mr. Dirty, really Just the is. trend has been upward, even though people have said it's going to go up and it has <clears throat> not gone up as fast as people thought, but it's gone up with historically low rates. And it's, uh, Seems to be somewhat of the appropriate time for us to move them now. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve this. Second. All right. I will second it. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. If there's nothing else to come before the Finance Committee, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Ms. Porterfield, would you mind if we move health and rack up? Miriam is here, and but she just got back from vacation, so we can get one. Can get it in and out. Just okay. Certainly. Okay. Call to order health and recreation. So we'll move forward to the top of the agenda. Okay. So okay sure. Okay. Um, so we started last week, uh, last session, uh, two weeks ago, with the discussion with the affirmative action board. So I thought we should have some more discussion um, regarding that. Um, it's a board that was on the list of boards that we're considering that we're considering obsolete, but we just felt that it's a board that needs to remain. So it, um, one of the you sent some information and asked that there be some consider some changes to Correct. to the makeup of the board. So I just want to know what you know what, what the reason was for the changes and you know the value in that. 
Um, well, what I decided is that um, instead of the board consisting of uh, nine members, we would uh, bring it down to seven members. And I had listed, I don't know whether you have a copy of it, of uh, the, the different um, membership that we would like on there. And it is, what I've done basically is uh, reiterate that we want the seven members simply for the fact of um, um, feasibility of working with a group. And the larger the group, and I usually it is the more difficult to get a quorum. And I noticed that there's been some issues with getting a quorum with other boards. And seven people, I think it's pretty much manageable to have them come. And it's not so much the numbers that I wanted you to focus on. And I, want, I really wanted you to focus on Section E, where it talks about membership. We don't necessarily want a particular um, member to join to represent one group. And I would very much appreciate that everyone represent the city as a whole. That's really what the focus of the change really would be. And understand that if you're serving on the board, if you were high, if you were asked to serve on the board to represent women's interests, you're not just representing women's interests, but you're representing the community as a whole. So that's what I would very much appreciate that the uh, council focus on when uh, we constituting this board. Is there any discussion regarding this board, Ms. Barraza? Um, I. I Recognize Ms. Kajusti's point because we had such an issue with the police board too. But I also thought what you recommended is to keep the legislation as it is, and if we have trouble filling it, then reduce it. I don't see where any um, group of people isn't being, you know, supported by the. Apparently, it's very much Monday by the reduction of the board. I mean, all all people are still being. You know, represented, but if we have nine people that want to serve, that would be great. If we don't, then I don't see any harm in reducing the number of the board. Of the board. Um, I also want to reiterate that uh, service, in, um, service on this board requires HR human resource experience, and um, whether currently employed or retired. And when you have professionals serving on a board such as this, and you're looking at the timing for them to be on there, um, they're going to have to meet during business hours because of the nature of this board. I don't know whether um, you considered that part of it also. Um, getting nine professionals to serve on this is going to be um, a little bit challenging as well. So. Consider that, and also um, the the board as is does not have section E, where we're requesting membership to understand that they are servicing the entire community. I would very much appreciate to have that language included as well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, Mr. Um, Juicy? You, you you gave some details that we are not a part of the legislation we had in terms of meeting, in terms of the requirement of the board members all have experience with HR. Where is that particular language? Um, it's not existing? in here, but understand that you're dealing with um, civil rights laws, you're dealing with employment laws, you're dealing with contracts, contracts laws. These are the issues that the Affirmative Action Office handles on a day-to-day -day basis. And anyone serving on that board will need to have that ex level of experience um, to, to basically have someone that does not have affirmative action or employment or human resource or contract compliance experience is very challenging. That would require my office to basically teach and explain to them what does affirmative action do. I'd very much like this board to get going from the moment it's, 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 it's on board because I don't want to have to take that time to have to explain to members, okay, here, is, here are the affirmative action laws, here are the employment laws, and here are the things, and that takes time for the board to get going on what we need to be doing for the city. Thank you. Uh, what about somebody with uh, legal background, legal, legal that experience? Would be, that would be great. Board. One or two lawyers on this board would help us. But then again, you're looking at nine, um, uh, Ms. is looking at nine members. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, but I would very much appreciate to have that legal experience on the board. And just to follow, if we don't have that, we would still have the 
our city attorneys or the county oh, attorneys always. being able to always, always have that. This is simply city. This is not county. Okay. This is only All right. City. Very good. Okay. Um, I have some concern with that because nowhere in this correct does it say that correct. It, like it was my um, experience on the zoning board. Certainly, I'm not privy to every little nuance of our code coming out to the zoning board, but that's where Mr. Strikeman as liaison to the zoning board would help us kind of navigate through those things. So although I think it would be good to have some people on the board have that background, I don't know that it's necessary to have every single person. And if so, then we have to change the legislation of the No, you don't, the, because it, it would be procedures. It's not necessarily legislation. It yeah. would be procedures. I, I just think that's again, where, it's your it, Again, it's yeah. at your discretion, but my preference would be that the people that serve on the board have yeah. that HR human resource experience. I think some of it is, that's valid. But I also think that as the affirmative action officer, you would help guide people through. You would say, this part of the law dictates, dictates this. I mean, I don't, I don't, that's just what I've what I've experienced in boards that I've sat on in the past, like, you know, if I, I sit on the, reboard, uh, the board of a retirement home, I don't know all the nuances of elder care, but the executive director shepherds us through that. So I think that's a good thing to keep in consideration, but I also think that we should be open to community members you know, um, I, I don't know. I know. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you. And I have made. I have some potential board members for you to consider, if you so wish. And every one of these potential board members do have that recruitment. They have that bad, that, that experience that I, that I, that I'm actually requesting that yeah. they serve that people that serve on the board um, have. And I think that's a great thing to take into consideration when we're vet during the vetting process. But I'm not sure I want it to be a recording. I don't think it should be. I mean, I think it's it's um, it's important that we have some people that have that level of experience, but it's also important because everybody we're not. It's going to be difficult to find. You have to have this background and then also fit into this category which we're talking about. So I think to ask to require all of that is a lot. If we say the majority need to have that, that that's a that's a consideration, but certainly not everyone. Um, then that that locks out a lot of people who may want to serve, who may be able to. Uh, I mean, when. When some people come, first come to their job, they don't have that particular experience, but they learn as they go. So if we have someone else that teaches them as they go along, you're gonna, you would be available, I would assume, to do that. Um, I think it's important that we make sure that we make cast the wet net wide enough to get allow anyone who may be interested and has the skills to build in the background. Um, but not necessarily narrow it down to it has to be age. And that's what I want. That's why I want to be part of that conversation because it, it, that's another reason why I'm here tonight. So because I, I do want to be part of that conversation when it comes to putting um, getting the board together. Um, I think <laughs> we, 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 we more, I mean because really you're asking for an ideal situation. Can I choose the people who are going to kind of oversee what I do? And that's what you're well, asking. It, well, basically, yeah, well, it is because I have worked with. I've been on. I've been on a affirmative action board before, mm -hmm. and I have seen the kind of work that goes on there, and I have seen the good, the bad, and the not so happy side mm -hmm. of the affirmative action arm um, of, of, of an affirmative action board. It's a lot of work, and members who come in do not realize the level of work that's involved and how important it that everything we do because when there is when there is litigation involved it is important for us to have all our T's crossed because anyone can come in and, and and claim that they've been discriminated on this and that basis. But when the board is well informed about what it needs to do, we get the job done well as a board. So that's why I I'm here asking you to um, consider, I'm not asking you, consider um, my recommendation to you. Um, uh, has the board been active since you've been the affirmative action no. officer? No, there has not been a board. Okay. So we definitely need to. Yes. Yes. Um, additionally, I noticed that there was a category for disabled in the old legislation and it's not in the new. Um, I don't know what you mean by new. You mean my recommendation? Your, your recommendation. My recommendation is there. It says um, disabled person, veterans, governance, and collective bargaining units, and other relevant constituency. Right. I didn't no one ever have disabled. So. Yeah. It's listed in E. 
in section E. Okay, but then that's what I'm talking about. In yeah. section D, section spell out. Yeah. It's section not on there. Yes, it is not. So it's removed from there. Then. Yes. So we spell out every other group and then put kind of like put the disabled down there. So I think that we should. Uh, it was removed, and I'd like to see it back in there okay. specifically. Actually, sure. Um, are there more questions? Because we're, we're there'll be further, just, you know, discussion as we move forward. I think Absolutely. it's important that we have uh, this board up and running. I don't know how many years it has it been, so that we should move forward to get that happening. So, um, are there other questions? You know? Right. And you said that, and let me just also say that people who are interested, and we did talk about the categories, um, please submit the resume if they can send it to my email. And we'll, you know, the council will consider um, all the resumes that are, that are submitted. And if you have uh, people that you'd like us to I will, I will certainly follow okay. those resumes. Yeah. Any other questions? Actually, it's important to all of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I usually do, yes. Any other questions? Am I to do anything right now? No, right now we're just having some discussion, trying to sort uh, this out. We're not talking about specific changes to the legislation or anything at this time. Um, I forwarded the I forwarded my recommendation to the council, and it's up to the council to decide whether they want to go with it. And if they do, they'll forward it to you. Okay. Yes. Um, I, the E that you added, I understand, and I think that's extremely important. But in terms of lowering the number um, at this point in time, I don't think that we should start with nine. If we can get nine, it's wonderful. And if we can't get nine, then we consider uh, lowering the number. That's, that would be my thought on that. Anyone else? All right. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is the uh, draft legislation for the setting the golf fees, setting rates and fees for golf fees. Right now, if you were to take a look at section or chapter 165 of the uh, code you would see 165-3 where there are a number of fees that are established for the golf course and what we are discussing at this point is deleting the establishment of the fees within the code the procedure that has been adopted by the council I want to say for probably a year or a little bit longer is that uh, the code would provide that there shall be fees but then the fees are set from time to time by resolution so that the um, you don't need to go through the whole process of changing the code and uh, so on every time you want to change the fee and add a fee or delete a fee and for example, the fees right now don't list anything for lessons. Uh, and we, the golf committee and uh, Chris is here, if you have any questions, but would like the ability to you know, come in and say we need to increase this, decrease that, add this fee, delete that fee, whatever, uh, as we have done with a number of other uh, areas in the code. Uh, so, Essentially, 165-3 will be, uh, everything in there would be deleted and it will be all rates and fees associated with the golf course it shall be set from time to time uh, by the council by resolution. And we're not saying at this point that we're going to change any, but uh, there are some that are definitely going to be added and depending on what the golf committee says, there may be some changes recommended. Ultimately, that would be up to you. I think it's uh, you know a good idea to go ahead and, and change this. I think in the same time, we do need to consider, or we should consider, um, some of the current fees. I think one of the things I've realized over the last year or two uh, relating to the golf course fees is that the, the course is a benefit to residents of the city. The city residents get a discount. Uh, however, non-residents, we want to make sure that our rates that we charge non-residents are not um, unfairly competing with tax-paying golf courses, so a stadium or any of the other golf courses in the area, but stadium is, is a taxpayer in our, in our community, and if we are undercutting their prices for non-residents, we're kind of putting them at a disadvantage uh, you know, 
the city went into selling pizzas and we sold pizza cheaper than any other pizza place in the city, we'd have a lot of upset, you know, customer, you know, com uh, constituents. So I think that if we price our non-resident rates to be on par with market rates, I think it would not put them at such a disadvantage and allow our taxpaying businesses to actually conduct a, a solid business and, and not have competition that has an advantage. So I think it's something we need to consider how we price our, our, our golf fees. So. So. Thank you. Um, so again, I'm, I'm assuming I missed that meeting where the fees are actually distributed to council members, the current fees uh, were given to us somewhere previous to that. Last year, it was like... Oh, so it's not... Two weeks ago, and I said the exact same thing. Yes. All okay. right, <laughs> okay. so... Uh, yes. And I'm assuming as the golf committee, have they met to, to compare what Stadium is doing or and what we are currently charging? I mean, have we done that comparison anywhere? There's a recommendation um, of the uh, fee structure. There is. What out? Two weeks, two weeks ago. ago. Okay, so that's why I missed that. All right, so my apologies for, okay. for not receiving that, well, obviously. Make sure uh, <laughs> so we can show a copy. And, and then the next question, um, I, I did happen to, to be at the uh, public hearing last week, uh, or the meeting uh, last week, where the, a couple of folks came to the rail regarding uh, uh, discounts for veterans and I believe uh, the disabled. Yeah. Um, so are we considering that as well, hopefully within those the rate structure and who do we? It's already, it's already in the rate It's already in there, so we're all set. For the disabled, for the for disabled as well? Yes, is it in the rate structure? For veterans and seniors right now. Veterans and seniors. So there isn't anything for the disabled? Not because specifically was, listing disabled? Uh-huh. No. Okay. Um, okay. And if, didn't we talk about that last time around? We did. And it was, I'm trying to think, somebody, I don't remember who it was, somebody on the council at the time said, yeah, how do you classify, right? right. How, you know, because yeah. everyone's saying, well, I'm disabled, like it's a discount. I mean, you know, how, yeah. how do you, how would you differ how do you that? stick to, you know, if you're yeah. a veteran, there's proof, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm not sure if, if there's. senior, there's proof. Right. So that was the discussion, how is, if someone is disabled, what is the requirement? The verification that, process. That, yeah. yeah, what would that be? Okay. So we would have to. Make sure we take all that into account. Yeah. Yes. They'd have to, I mean, I don't Thank I have, you, Jason. I see your <laughs> sign. I think it's, it's fine, but then the, the, we'd have to figure out a way. I mean, if you're a senior, you show your ID. If you're a veteran, you show your ID. If you're disabled, um, it, it, that's not a disability that, you know, is uh, visibly recognizable. Right. How, do you, how do you say that I'm disabled, right. and therefore I get this discount? Right. So we'd have to figure that out. So somewhere in the near future, we'll be getting the rates that the council will eventually be voting on. Is that correct? Right, correct now, what is right, right now, is that this is a call for public hearing, and this is a discussion on changing the ordinance to be set the rates by resolution. And okay. on the next committee meeting, you will be getting the proposed fee structure, and I can provide the backup of how we determine those rates. We talked about that. I believe at the last meeting, Good. Mr. Razzle brought it up, similar uh, to what Mr. Erickson brought up with regards to how we compete with private courses and how we also compete with other public courses, such as Capitol Hill or Colony. So I will provide that back up to you. However, this is right now just to change the ordinance to the set by resolution. So you haven't missed okay. anything yet. Okay, that's you, okay. you can still comment on that when you see it. You, this right. is just a, a separate procedure. Very because the call for public hearing takes longer than the resolution. Then doing it. Okay. Perfect, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Is that approved? Um, no, I need a motion first. <laughs> okay. No. So moved. You know. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. It's, so you're just discussing what okay. is going to be um, seen at the public hearing. You, know, you moved the That's public correct. hearing the last meeting. Right. And you don't know, <clears throat> require a motion on this until this the right. ordinance gets passed. Okay. Next time. It's for discussion only. Okay. Right. Anything else to come before uh, health and recreation? Uh, if not. Okay. Yep, second. All those in favor? All right. All right, Thank I'm going to call to order city development and planning. On, I've been remiss in not welcoming Mr. Kozier to the Thank table. You. Very happy to have you here. Thank you. Um, first item on the, the agenda is the authorization to enter into an agreement with the ACOM USA for design service for the Oak Street Bridge. And I'll just kind of preface this discussion by saying that I did sit in on the meeting uh, when staff were looking at the different proposals that they had received. Um, Mr. Winkler is still working on writing up a, a formal process for all of this, but so we're still working on that. 
this particular situation is slightly different from others that we have dealt with, and I'll let Mr. Wallen explain that. Yes. What you have in front of you uh, briefly is a letter of recommendation uh, from the committee, the evaluation committee to the council regarding the Oak Street Bridge. The Oak Street Bridge is a federal aid eligible bridge that was on the TIP, which is the Transportation Improvement Program list. It was on the TIP uh, several years ago for a replacement of the bridge under a new initiative called Moving Ahead for Progress, uh, MAP 21. Uh, those type of projects were sidelined until uh, such funding would be enabled and we moved into a preservation era. Since that time, the bridge was closed April of last year. Uh, it was agreed on by the CDTC to move the Oak Street Bridge into a preservation project and an amendment was passed doing such which would allow us to put out an RFQ which is different from an RFP as the federal guidelines for these type of projects do not allow price to be an option in selection. They are strictly qualifications based. The committee gathered together. We reviewed the nine proposals that we got. I'd also like to state that the proposals are received from a select list the LDSA, which is the Local Development uh, Selection Organization, uh, they are a committee that we select, we pre-select firms based off, and they are allowed to compete for federal aid work for three years. So this was not a open to the public kind of thing. This was a pre-selected list for our region. We go out with the RFQ, which is a simple borrower plate, and you have to submit a notice of intent. Out of the 15 firms on the list, we received nine notice of intents for this project. Out of the nine, we deem that AECOM was the best, most qualified firm for the job, and that's the recommendation of the firm. Mm -hmm. Questions? Ms. Porterfield. Um, in, in times past, when we, I know the RFP is different than the RFP, we kind of see the names of the other groups that, um, even though it's a select list, mm -hmm. but I don't, uh, you see here just the legislation. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. No, it was it was advised just to come uh, before with a letter of recommendation. I can I can tell you verbally what who they were. They were uh, uh, Barnum Judas, Clough Harbor, Creighton Manning, Urban Anthony, Spectra Engineering, WSP Sales, and I believe <coughs> how many we got up there? Is that about it? Greenman Peterson. That was the list. They're all some of the largest firms in the area. And then AE which was the selection. And so this you said this was based on just um, their Qualifications. qualifications. They submit uh, three-page uh, qualifications <coughs> that is a supplemental to what their original LDSA packet is. Their packet is quite considerable of all their experience and qualifications. They set who the personnel that you'd be working with on the job is, how they feel the structure is going to be, and then we get two pages of how they feel that the project should be progressed. And after reviewing those five pages, that's how we came to our determination. This firm apparently has really some experts in bridge work that uh, made them outstanding to the mm -hmm. committee. Right Have they ever done work for us? Have they done work not in my past, uh, but I can't speak not for here. before my tenure? Not here. Not okay. in the city of Scranton. Okay. Ms. Borgefield? Where are they from? They are out of Latham. However, AECOM is the number one largest <coughs> engineering firm in the world. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve this. So moved. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, final discussion here on the legislation deleting obsolete boards and commissions. And I know you have the list of the different ones that we are looking to remove. Does anybody have any questions? I would just add. Uh, I've got to put in an effective date uh, with respect to that. Uh, I believe the rest of it is set. Uh, and I do have to check, and we may have to make the effective date January 1, 6, uh, 15. When is your come up? Never. January <laughs> There, uh, what I am checking is uh, whether or not the 
legal authority of the mayor can be either expanded or diminished during uh, his or her term, whoever is there. And we may have a prohibition saying that we can't do anything to diminish uh, the authority that the mayor has uh, with respect to anything during the course of his term. It's like you can't increase the mayor's compensation during the course of his term. Uh, so this is uh, something that we have to take a look at. It's all to elected officials, so you have to cycle it to right. Otherwise, you have to put it on the ballot as a referendum. It makes it more expensive, complicated okay. process. It gives everything that everybody wants. It just throws up the issues. These committees haven't met for so many years anyway, so they're, they're all completed anyway. Right. Yeah. Other. Well, yeah. yeah. the dare board I used to sit on that one. I think it was good. So, let me just reiterate here we're talking about the dare advisory committee. Yeah. The Environmental Conservation Commission. Uh, sorry, I'll skip one here. The Police Objective Review Committee and the Parks and Recreation Committee. So, well, not the right. committee, just the two but subcommittees. Two the subcommittees, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, the Tuesday in the Park and Colonial Festival. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we will. Moving this forward, and I guess I'll entertain a motion then to approve this. Okay, move second. So, uh, and the effective date is not so January 1, 2016. Correct. That would be the last line of the legislation. Okay. Okay. Ms. Porterfield, will you second that? Second that. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um, and ceremonial resolution for the ancient order of Hibernians. Move it. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. If there's nothing else to come before city development and planning. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'll come with a call to order government operations. Amending ERP application with Metroplex for continuing to up for property along the Gaslink Avenue, Mr. Folster. You also have received a memo from me. Uh, and very simply, this is a continuation of the work that commenced in the Broadway South parking lot uh, last year. And Metroplex uh, did everything with respect to that lot. But then there was an amendment, and I gave you the uh, resolutions that were passed. Oh, all right. Yeah, uh, I just asked for that. I just, I just said that. Yes, it's my new print. Oh, you don't you have the app in your way. Matching the hoes. Well, that's quick, isn't it? Do you find these? They're all separate. <laughs> Take one and pass it on. I wrote it, I know what it says. <laughs> Uh, there were add-ons to the page. The cleaning up Broadway South Lot uh, to encompass what has for sake of discussion among various groups been called a postage stamp. That's a small piece of property on the southwest corner of the uh, Broadway South parking lot, uh, stone's throw from the old way station down there uh, that has been cleaned up. But in the process of cleaning that up, they found that the contamination continues along the west side of Van Geisling Avenue uh, running south. Uh, and uh, DEC wants this cleaned up, and the cost right now is estimated to be in the vicinity of uh, $900,000. Encon through the Downfield Fund is coming up with approximately $800,000. Uh, and so the balance, um, there are still discussions going on with Metroplex, but 
a substantial portion of that is going to be covered by Metroplex. Uh, and so it's just a process of amending the original application that was made for the cleanup of the South of Schenectady lot. Uh, we're amending it a second time. It was amended uh, one time by this body. The resolution is in the stuff that was passed out in 2007, uh, approximately a year ago. I'm not sure exactly when, uh, but this is just a second amendment. It will be following the same process. And this is the property that was privately owned? That it is not privately owned, but either John Roth personally or Highbridge Development does have a long-term lease with an option to purchase. And that goes back uh, to the early 2000, I want to say mean 2002 and 2003, along and through there. And I believe it's a 20 year lease. And right now, so the, right now, the cost of the city is $100,000. In that range, yes. No. no. That's what has to come up over, come, that has, that amount has to be paid over and above what NCON is going to pay. But the final amount that the city has to come up with will be determined uh, after Metroplex does it that does its thing, and it may, it's going to pay a significant portion. This has expanded slightly over the years. Uh, the city has paid nothing for this Metroplex, okay. and uh, DEC picked up all the costs. <clears throat> Cautiously optimistic that's how it's going to end. Yeah. Chance that we would be on the hook for a little bit, but just to clean it up and get it uh, behind us and to continue to move ahead with this uh, cleanup that is expanded. Looks like you found additional uh, deposits or residue on the uh, site, the expanded site. Questions? Well, actually, my question really, it, I'd like to first of all read the legislation a little bit more before, um, you know, because we just got late in the email today. But also, we're gonna, I mean, how so we have a number of what the city is going to have to put in? I know we're expecting it to be a small amount, but maybe nothing. The problem is that. It's, those are the estimates that are out there now. They've done the estimates in the past, and it's somewhat on the high side. When the work has actually been done, they've been able to do it for less than what some of the numbers have been. We anticipate that we'll can continue with this project, this phase of the project. So we don't have a real number. I mean, we know 100000 that we've that between Metroplex and the city. We just don't know the city's amount. That would be the high side in the worst case scenario. Other questions? No. <laughs> Very good. So, um, just so we want us to, to move this today. I mean, I haven't had a chance to read it. I just haven't had a chance to read through it. Yeah. I got it. But we can certainly move it. And then if there's any issues, we can talk about it. Yeah, caucus. Yeah. Caucus, right? No. no. We can roll call it. Okay. Correct? Yes. You could do that. I mean, just in the interest of time, so it's not, I mean, is this time sensitive? Can we put it on again for two weeks without any big deal? There were a number of issues in coordinating some of the stuff between Metroplex and the city and NCON, and we have gotten those issues resolved. Uh, we were originally planning on putting this on in December, and it has been moved a couple of times while we were resolving issues, and there's some urgency in getting things moving because they want to get all the work done this uh, this year, this construction season. So if we could proceed with it tonight, that would be appreciated. Well, we'll move that change in again to review if we have any problems well, on Ms. Porter, we can serve the quality if we have. Because we have a memo here that's dated January, so, you know. That, one, that goes to Metro Plus. It was in this Metro Plus, yeah. Metro Plus. I just haven't had a chance to read it. That's... Yeah. Side so move. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? 
those in favor? Aye. Aye. But we know we'll be looking for some more information before Monday. Or if you have some questions answered. Please let me know if you do have questions. So if there's something that I can't answer, I can go to Metroplex or DEC and we can answer for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, uh, we're going to review draft legislation, proposed change to Chapter 255 of the City Code concerning water meters, Mr. Holster. As I mentioned to you a while ago, uh, uh, the city wants to install water meters, and there are approximately, I think you've got a memo on this. I think we got it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, approximately 1,500. Uh, water meters throughout the city for this and uh, various commercial properties. <laughs> and what we're looking to do is to use new technology so that it's not necessary to go and have those meters read by a human. Uh, and right now there are two different possibilities. One is putting up a tower uh, where the tower can bounce off the meters. Uh, the other one is setting it up so it would be where you could run a vehicle around the city and vehicle ping the meters to get the uh, readings. And uh, there are a number of meters, a lot of our meters are old, so they should be replaced anyway. And this is a process where uh, the city is going to be replacing the meters uh, and using new technology. And because there is going to be such a influx, not wrong word, such a high number of meters to be done, uh, rather than it just being permissible for city personnel to install the meters, uh, this allows for agents, uh, people hired by contractors to be hired by the city to uh, work on installing the meters. Uh, the other thing it does when the budget was passed, uh, there were certain revenue lines put in place, uh, and you will see that there is a table uh, towards the back. Uh, and starting with 255-74, uh, new uh, water rates, uh, and those are the numbers that are going to be necessary to drive the revenues that you put into the budget uh, when you approve the budget last fall. Mm -hmm. uh, so the rates are now uh, in line with the budget that was passed. Uh, so those are the two things that the changes uh, in uh, chapter 255 of the Question? Mr. Erickson? I'm sorry. Uh, this wasn't, I guess, one of the things that doesn't look like it was modified, but just in the first page it says 255-47, uh, uh, right to order meeting, metering. And it says, the um, Department of Wastewater reserves the right to order a meter to be placed on any service or take out a meter and place the consumer flat rate whenever in the opinion of the director of the Department of Water and Wastewater, it is for the best interest of the city to do so. So it seems very arbitrary, I guess, in terms of when we decide. It's not really specified. I mean, how do you, I mean, I think we all know residential generally is flat rate and commercial would be metered. But it doesn't say that here. I mean, is there an option for the, you know, somebody to say, well, hey, you know, Vince, let's put a meter on your house and you know, oh, yeah. Mar Marion, you're going to have a flat rate, right? I mean, shouldn't it be kind of specified in what cases we do which so that it's not arbitrary and we kind of, who, who would know, right? Who would know if someone's being inconsistent in their application of the rule? We did not look at that section because that was not right. an issue that was before us, but if you want to make changes to that, uh, we could uh, we could consider that. And this is coming up for a public hearing on uh, Monday night. This is not to pass the legislation. Okay. So if you are of a mind to make changes, uh, 
if you want to let me know now or after the hearing, based upon whatever comments are made at the hearing, uh, we could do that. Uh, but just let me know as soon as you'd like changes, and I'll try and come up with the language to accomplish what you want. Mr. Thank you. And being a former licensed master plumber, Madison, Buffalo, New York, I have a couple questions here. Um, regarding the meters, we're talking, this is only, we're talking commercial use only, though, right? Yes. Okay. So if, if you go to 255-50, you're saying the meter should not exceed one inch. Uh, certainly, no, commercial buildings are bigger than one inch. As, at, you're right. But over one inch, the should that property say minimum? owner has to pay for it. Well, that's not how I'm reading it. That's... That's the, these are the meters to be furnished by the city. Right. If you're over one inch, you got to obtain the business has to purchase it. Right, and it's got to be compatible with our system. Okay, and the the agent, the authorized agent, shouldn't that be a licensed master plumber, a licensed plumber, contractor to be the installer? I mean, who else would be a licensed or an authorized agent? Who are we thinking about in that respect? Paul Cern can't be John Multivaron. <laughs> <laughs> The and, and if this is something that you want to put in here, I can certainly change the language. But um, if you want to be a licensed plumber, licensed uh, master plumber, uh, if you want something like that in there, uh, when Paul Lafon was talking to me, he wanted to keep as much. Uh, flexibility as possible for the city. It's hopefully only going to be a, a one time frame to get all of these meters done. done and then you're not going to be um, using the people on a regular basis after that. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not a plumber. Yeah. I, can't, I don't know if changing the meters is going to be more than uh, disconnecting two unions and then putting a seal on it. I don't know how complicated a job it is, uh, but and you know I know that there are many things where the knowledge of the master plumber are extremely important. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if that's true. I think it's a licensed plumber. I mean, we can check with the engineer or check with whoever. Uh, but I just think that's a very important part of it. Um, okay. Especially, I mean, that's part of our code anyway. Isn't it? When we go for permits, exactly. uh, when we're filing for permits in any work, you've got to have a licensed plumber doing the work uh, mm -hmm. to be inspected. I just think uh, this is very critical. And, then, and I really think it's something that we. But let me follow up. Are all our businesses are metered or they're not? I'm just taking that. They all are metered right now. In theory, that's. What's in place? That's okay. We do have some that are not. The, uh, are not. Right. Oh, yeah. So, if someone decides they should be flat rate, they can be flat rate. We don't know who that is, but somebody will decide. Most of those, my understanding is, has evolved with the utilization of the building. Yeah. Well, the residential at one time has moved to a commercial application. Now. Okay. <coughs> I'll talk with. Well, very good. Now, this is just Paul here, so I don't know sense, but I'll, I'll follow right. up with that. Yeah. Paul Fon would be the person who would want to talk about that. Just as a point of clarification um, for Mr. Erickson, uh, although 255-47 says anybody can decide, 255-46 explains what businesses can be metered. Do you know what I mean? So that takes the residential part of it out. I just don't want anybody getting yeah. nervous out there that owns a home that all of a sudden the city can come do this. So just a point of clarification. I mean, still we might want to have some clarification as to what businesses get flat rate versus meter, but you had mentioned right. residents, and that's not right. part of this. Because I mean, I think, so. I think clearly I, I would make the assumption that there are some people who probably prefer to have metered, of course, and some people would prefer to have flat. You're yeah. using a lot of water. I'd like to have a flat. I'm only living in my house, you know, four months a year, and I'm in Florida, happy, and I'm going to want a meter because I'm not going like to pay for it. Right. right. So, which is why I'm offering the clarification because this yeah. is particularly for for businesses yeah. in the in the preceding okay. paragraph. Did somebody else have a question? I'm sorry, Mr. Kuluchavir. Mr. Paul, so you mentioned um, tower and possible a vehicle with a transponder. Do you have a cost? Do I have one? Cost associated with these two items? I don't, but I believe that it was part of the budget. Yeah. Capital uh, budget. Capital budget that you 
passed last year. And um, I believe right now that they are leaning towards going with one where it's going to be with a vehicle uh, because it's more flexible. Is that probably the most good? Yeah, okay. Yeah, National Grid has it too. That's what we have. It and has. yeah, so this is, um, you're out of my category or out of my uh, field of expertise here, but I think that that's the way they're leaning. But they're doing the final review on proposals and costs and so on right now. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Yep. Okay, other questions? Comments? And are we... I'm sorry. We don't have to move anything on this? No, because it's time for a public hearing. Yep. Monday night. Okay. Yep. Very good. Okay. Uh, OSN video slash editing slash broadcast, Mr. Thorne. This is just a uh, reissuing the uh, purchase contract for the... Uh, the broadcast of the city council and committee meetings um, for twelve thousand dollars a year. What that breaks down to is two hundred dollars for each committee meeting and three hundred dollars for each uh, council meeting. Um, two of each each month. Questions, comments? No, I think they do a great job. Yes. I'll move that. All in favor? Aye. Any other business to come before government operations this evening? Mr. Yeah. Just quickly about the water. How's uh, Paul doing with amending the code for lines? Anything happening? Well, it's quite a while since we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Months. Yes, he is working on it. Uh, and I expect that that will be something that will be coming up uh, for action by the council in the foreseeable future. We're, but we're not enforcing that. So that's why now is that's not being enforced. That's my concern. Should we put that in, uh, for two weeks, Mr. Reed? Yeah. Okay. Any other business? Motion to adjourn? Yeah, we'll move some moves. Second? Aye. Aye. Call to order public safety. Review draft legislation prohibiting the sale of a um, single cigarette. Mr. Paulson. This, uh, I don't know if anything was submitted to you previously, but uh, there is a concern about. Uh, some convenience stores selling uh, single cigarettes. And that is prohibited under uh, state law. Uh, however, it is one of those things that uh, is not often enforced through the regular channels for the enforcement of state laws. Uh, so what we're looking at is making it part of the code so that our code enforcement officers and or the police, but we are able to write the tickets and prosecute the offenses in city court as a regular code offense. Uh, there are other sections that will set uh, <coughs> fines for the various offenses within the chapter where this would be going on the initial conviction on the first conviction, it would be a fine up to $250. Uh, so it's very short, very simple, uh, just can't sell loose cigarettes. It's my understanding that they are often being sold in the city now for a dollar a piece. Uh, so I haven't bought any that way and I don't smoke, but I understand that's uh, not an uncommon practice. I can't move it fast enough. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better move it fast enough. Go ahead. I'm just about to carry on. You're saying that the, 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 the first time there will be a fine of $200, and then after, up to $250, and then after that, it's higher. Yes. Very good. Thank you. 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 Thank
first 10 stores in, you know, you can size those 10 stores, generated just under 3,500 calls for service in the last 24 months. And uh, they've acknowledged they might do this. They've indicated they're going to stop it. But Commissioner Bennett, Chief Bill Cullen, uh, emphasized that, that it's going to stop one way or the other. I just connect for me the cost for service in the loose cigarettes. Mm -hmm. This is at the neighborhood stores, the corner stores. And the first 10 stores mm -hmm. that we had in generated just under 3,500 calls, primarily police, some fire calls, in roughly a 24 month period. And, and so it's part of what they're selling is that. Right. The it's the atmosphere that they create mm -hmm. where it fosters some drug activity. It's a, kind of a cavalier approach to retailing, and some of the things that they're doing are improper or illegal. <laughs> just tightening it up. If the standards higher. We want them to uh, create value in the neighborhoods and uh, reflect well on the community, and not foster criminal activity either on their premises or adjacent to it. I mean, it's, it's against the law, state and federal stuff. So. Just the problem is one of these things that it's on the books as being illegal, just a little no enforcement. We're going to now give uh, our police department the ability to enforce it and the potential to generate some revenue from it if people are now compliant. Does the county get involved with this? Don't they with regulation? Not the single ones. What they're doing now, they're actually, they are actually, not the Robin Sarge, but they are actually like, youth girls involved with it, they're actually going to some of the stores now throughout the county, uh, sending uh, youth who are underage to purchase cigarettes. Yeah, no, I meant uh, uh, as far as breaking the seal on a cigarette. It's not a local act. It is not. It's state taxation and federal regulation to get you to a government. I'll step over no, we've already. Yeah. Yeah. We already. Don't, don't move it again. You missed, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Please turn down. All right, we'll move you. Speak in favor. Remember that. All right, she wanted to move it. We good? I'm excited. Put you down for next committee meeting. Do we ask the more? You reserve it. Um, roll call on the motion, Mr. Powell. Evening. Good evening, uh, Chief. We, uh, we, the police department, are requesting to designate La Rosa Automotive as a single source vendor to install our emergency equipment in our new police vehicles. They are a reputable, reputable city company that we've been doing business with for approximately 10 years. Um, in the past, these items were on state contract, but as of right now, they're not. Hence is why we're here. Chief, how many cars are we looking to fit up? Four. Two are in two, now, two. and two will be in any day now. Are there other um, firms, that other companies that could do this work in the vicinity, in the area? Not not the companies that are of his caliber. There's uh, a company in Utica, Glens Falls, Pittsfield, that we did some precursor review on, but uh, nothing really thorough. However, um, they're just logistically too far away. That's a city vendor too. Yes. That's game. I mean, there's probably some local vendors. Mm -hmm. In fact, I know there are. Um, but not, not at this caliber, and there's been issues. Does the police department have um, access to bid net that the city uses? To, to bid? To bid net, yeah. Well, we've, we've worked really hard to put all of our stuff out on bid and get some competitive right. rates. So I'm wondering if the police department has you know, access to bid net where we can go out and bid on this. Well, so we, we again, we never had to because it was all the equipment was on state contract. Yeah. But right now, there, it's not. I'm sure eventually there will be. Okay. So it's probably a, a one-time deal, hopefully. Yeah. 
Ms. Porter. Oh, okay. You said, uh, I was, well, my question was how we decided they should be the single source vendor. But in addition, you said we hope this would be a one time deal. Well, because if it's on state contract, then it's, it's really a moot point for approval. So we expect to go back to state contract? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is, you think, just this one time for these four vehicles? More than likely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a novice <laughs> there. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> yeah, so I, I got uh, questions here. So in terms of that they're not on the state contract, how is the pricing that they're proposing now same as what it was when it was on state contract, or is the price higher now that it's no longer on state contract, or did you do the a price job and is it lower than when it was on state contract? No, the prices are 2011 prices that he gave us. Okay. I also did a comparison of, I think it was 2013, maybe 2014 prices, which are considerably higher. And I do have some prices from the company where we purchased two of our vehicles, and they are a lot more higher than La Rosa. The second question is, where is La Rosa located? I'm not sure where I is. His address is Altamont Avenue. Okay. Um, 1100. Yeah. I guess that was a follow up. Is that in the city? Yes. Is that right? Yeah. He's city. In the city? I'm trying to picture where it could be. It's actually right around the corner. It's on. Um, it's just the way you go What's the name of the street? Cross Street from Dagostino. Yeah. yeah Cross Street from Dagostino Block. Oh. Oh. Almost close to price level. Yeah, I know exactly where that is. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> you have a question? No, sir. Okay. I'll move this. Okay. I'll for a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. It's not me. It's no. Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I thought I was in here somewhere. Yeah, I know. Oh, you're shaking that around. You know, I'm. No, I didn't. Um, I, I'm just. Uh, I'm struggling with not going out of bed. <laughs> you know, we worked so hard to go out to bed on our stuff. And I, I have what kind of a time frame are we looking at here? Well, do we have here. ample time to go out to bed on this so that the, the taxpayers know we're doing something fair for them? We have we have equipment right now that we have purchased. Um, two of the vehicles came in about a month and a half ago, and the warranty course is on. We have some other equipment, uh, such as the computer that we purchased last, don't quote me, but I think it was probably last fall that there's, that's on warranty. So and those items are sitting there. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I'm one voice. If my colleagues feel comfortable with this, I'm not going to make a big stink, but I just feel like it's something we've pushed again and again and again that we want to go out to bed on stuff so that we really are sure that we're getting a fair price. So if everybody else is okay with it, um, I'm willing to go along for the ride. But if anybody else has concerns, I, I, I'd like to see it go out to bed. Well, I, I think he said it, it gave 211 prices. And, and also, it, it appears to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this isn't something that just anybody could do. It's, in terms of outfitting police cars, am that's I correct. In that? Yes. So it takes a special yeah. skill set. Special, and he has he has certifications in some of the equipment that will be installing. So mm -hmm. if we have problems, issues, we go right to him, and he fixes it, takes care of it. And He's right here. Convenient. Okay, it's, the, it's good. The nature of this, every time we buy police cars, they get more and more sophisticated in the electronics, lighting, and other radio equipment that are on the vehicles. And this lagged for some reason. When we purchased the vehicles, normally the state contract for the police vehicles has this as a companion bid so that when you buy a police car, you can look to see who the local vendor is to outfit the vehicle. And I expect that will be coming out sometime in the near future, but there's just this window now where that's not on the state contract. But again, La Rosa has had the state contract for, I don't know. Good 10 years. At least 10 years. And a uh, reputable firm who happens to be in the community. And this pricing structure the Chief outlined, again, is uh, fairly 
I should say very competitive. Two thousand eleven. Yeah. Yes. yes. Well, fairly competitive. Whatever, whatever price they give us is not quite good enough, but it's uh, <laughs> they uh, get a reputable firm that uh, for these four cars that allow us to move them back out, uh, get vehicles on the street on a supplement. Yeah. He has he has over a hundred state, local, and federal municipalities. He, uh, yeah, I don't question his reputation for one moment. That's not it's not it's not about Mr. Larosa or his business. It has nothing to do with it. Um, so I mean, again, like I said, I'm one voice. I'll move it, but if other people have concerns, it may come back around. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll second. Second. All Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Any other business before public safety? We'll be adjourned. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All to order claims? No. no. Public, public service. service. Huh? Public service and utility. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 I do not going to order. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. That's right, we've been out of order since the end. It's a clay piece, so it's like. Also, order public service and utilities. Sitting in for Carl is Chris Wallace. Okay. Or Jack Frame. Better looking at these two. Packer Body. Hey, everybody. What you have before you is the award furnishing and installing the refuse packer body. This Packer body was not available on New York State contract, so it went to bid. We received one bid from CEJJ, even though this was put on bid net and it was advertised in the paper. This is a, I guess, a specialty item. We have one bid. Uh, so this is just for the Packer body. This is not for the cabin chassis. The cabin chassis will be purchased separately on state contract. Are there any questions? One bid, if you don't mind. Is, uh, is this within our budget that... Um, we have scoped or allowed for this. I would like to defer that if I could. Is this? I mean, it says it's purchased or could be charged the capital budget. It says it's within. However, it, it was in within the original capital. But I, yes. yeah, that's a yes. Mr. Erickson. I have a couple questions. Um, one, this is two. Are we getting two? Is this here? But we're getting one or two? <laughs> two. We're getting two. So it's one hundred eighty-two thousand a piece. Eighty-two a piece. What is a, I don't know what it is. Uh, the body is, when you see on the recycler, it's uh, the right side driveway. If it says here where you would pull up, load into the side, hit the button, it packs it into the back. Oh, okay. So the pack, you know, has a hydraulic cylinder that pushes everything into the back. That's what I believe. So it's, these are the trucks that are driven on the right side. Yep. So along the curb, they load up one man operation, load it up, hit a button, packs it into the back. So I think well, these, are, these are recyclers mostly. <laughs> these are our, I don't think these are our garbage trucks. We so these, are the the recycling. Recycling. Oh, these are recyclers. Oh, okay. yeah. well, Left-hand turns are a little scary at times. Yeah. Do we have an option so the guy doesn't fall out of the truck when he's going? Yeah, so <laughs> <we're> <laughs> <gonna> <laughs> sure we have real those guys <laughs> keep running away. <laughs> Any other questions or discussion? That's pretty fun. <laughs> okay. No, yeah. I'll entertain a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Anything else to come before public safety? Uh, excuse me, public service and utilities. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. We were right, weren't we, Chuck? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> I took a quick look at the new yellow sheet. Yes. I, I went up one, I know. one committee on it. Motion going executive session.